With special counsel Robert Mueller's stunning comments on the Russia investigation sparking new calls for impeachment from Democrats, the White House message of the day was, bring it on. I'm not going to get into internal processes. I'm just saying we're always prepared and we're going to move forward doing what we think is important and focus on things that actually help sir, people. Sir. President Trump put his own spin on the special counsel's remarks, tweeting, nothing changes from the Mueller report. There was insufficient evidence and therefore in our country a person is innocent. The case is closed. Mr. Trump's use of the words insufficient evidence prompted questions about whether the president was doing some legal hair splitting. He hasn't changed his position. We've been saying the same thing for two years before the Mueller investigation even had to start. Aides to the president are declaring that Mr. Trump has been exonerated, but that's not what Mueller said. Mueller pointed to Justice Department policy laid out in an Office of Legal Counsel memo that bars the indictment of a sitting president. It does beg the question, if Donald Trump were not the president, could he be charged with a crime? What do you say to that? I think it's real simple. I say what we have said um, is that they were looking at whether or not there was collusion. That would be the crime that would have been committed, collusion or obstruction. And all of those things have been determined to not have taken place. Collusion, conspiracy, obstruction. And again, we consider this very much to be case closed. Democrats are crying foul. But for that memo? I believe the, a fair inference from what we heard from Bob Mueller is that there would have been indictments returned against this president. The president's legal team is also seizing on Mueller's comments, saying it's clear he wants to move on as well. It appears that the special counsel doesn't want to testify. And I, I could imagine why he doesn't. The yeah. irregularities in this investigation from the outset are uh, numerous. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders is snapping back at any notion that Mr. Trump hasn't done enough to speak out against Russian interference in U.S. elections. He isn't reluctant to say it. He said it a number of times that there was interference, and now we're taking steps on how we stop it from happening again. You guys constantly want to attack this president. But the Kremlin need only consider Mr. Trump's performance at a summit with Russia's Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Now, senior Republican and party officials said most in the party right now are satisfied with what Mueller had to say earlier in the day, but noted the increased pressure on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi from inside her own party to begin an impeachment process. The White House seems to welcome uh, all of that at this point. Now, one House Democrat, I should say, uh, told me that Pelosi is coming under increasing pressure tonight from her own caucus. As this House uh, Democrat put it to me just a short time ago, Wolf, the party is growing more restless. Wolf. All right, Jim Acosta at the White House, thank you. Let's go to our congressional correspondent, Phil Mattingly. He's up on Capitol Hill. Uh, Phil, how have Mueller's remarks today moved the mark when it comes to starting impeachment procedures? Well, Wolf, the voices among House Democrats that are supporting at least opening an impeachment inquiry certainly growing louder, certainly growing more fierce. But at least for the moment, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who is the one who will decide whether or not that moves forward, she's saying stay the course. Not quite yet. And while things might be on the table, at least not for the moment, will they go down that road? Take a listen. I think it's like 35 of them out of 238. Or maybe it's 38 of them out of 238 have said that they want it to be outspoken on impeachment, and many of them are reflecting their views as well as those of their constituents. Many constituents want to impeach the president, but we want to do what is right and what gets results. With respect to impeachment question, at this point, all options are on the table, and nothing should be ruled out. Well, if there's two really key things to get from both those statements, both from the Speaker and from House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler. One, that is not a shift from Jerry Nadler. He has been saying for weeks that nothing is being ruled out, but he's going to continue down the committee's regular investigative functions. The second is what Speaker Pelosi was referring to, and that while it is a very vocal group of 35 to 40 Democrats who are urging to move forward on impeachment, that does not make a majority. In fact, that's far short of a majority. And until they reach that threshold, Pelosi has made clear that she's comfortable in her position. Among the things she considers right now, the fact that Republicans lead the Senate. They have a 53-47 majority over there, and Republicans have made clear they believe, in the words of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, the case is closed. The other is the number of members of Pelosi's caucus who come from districts that President Trump won in 2016, a number of whom flipped those districts in 2018. Those individuals are not crying out for impeachment right now, and because of that, Pelosi wants to stay the course. Wolf. Phil Mattingly up on Capitol Hill, thank you. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Andre Carson of Indiana. He's a member of the Intelligence Committee. Uh, Congressman, uh, was Robert Mueller's public statement today sufficient, or do you still believe he needs to give public testimony before Congress? 
Well, I certainly direct, uh, respect Director Mueller. I respect his uh, work as a Marine and, and as the head of the FBI and his uh, work that has followed with the Justice Department. Uh, he's a very smart man. Um, he, 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 he tends to be an institutionalist or a company man, uh, and I respect that position from him. I think it would do good to come before the Congress so that the American people can see him. Now, with that comes the pageantry uh, that exists when you deal with members of Congress who are posturing for the cameras and who are being provocative. But I, I, I don't think that the, the line of questioning that will come from my colleagues will deter Director Mueller. I think he will remain firm on what is reported. But I still think it's healthy for the health of our democracy, Wolf, for him to come before Congress in a public setting to answer serious questions. Based on what you heard today, uh, Congressman, do you believe Mueller wants Congress to actually open an impeachment inquiry? You know, it's, it's, it, it's difficult to say. Uh, I think in a very real sense, he has left this to, uh, left this at the feet of Congress to really deal with. Uh, and I think that he's very wise in the way he's positioning himself, and he's very measured in his tone, which is consistent with how he's been since the beginning of his career. And so Congress does have a duty. I think uh, Chairman Nadler, as well as Chairman Schiff, uh, as well as Chairman Cumming and the other chairmen and women, uh, Maxine Waters as well, we've been deliberate in making sure the committees of jurisdiction play their role in unearthing criminal matters and really dealing with the kind of specificity necessary that the Intelligence Committee is tasked with and looking at the extent of Russia's interference into our electoral process. It's very clear it has to be dealt with in a very meaningful way before we hit 2020. Should the president be impeached? I don't think we should rule out an impeachment. I do think that there is a delicate balance. I think that uh, some some constituents want it, others want us to move forward. I don't think we need to rule it out. I don't think we need to let Trump off the hook as it relates to impeachment. We still have a constitutional duty. We have to be a check uh, to the administration's excess. However, we cannot be distracted and create a dynamic where Donald Trump becomes an underdog and he secures a re-election effort. So I think we have to be measured and really make the case before the American pe uh, people that an impeachment is necessary. Well, do you think Some are craving forward. Do you think, Congressman, at a minimum, you should at least begin the process, the procedures, start holding hearings in the House Judiciary Committee? I don't think we should rule anything out. I mean, far be it for me to tell Chairman Nadler what to do on his committee. I sit on the Intelligence Committee as well as the Transportation Committee. You know, Chairman DeFazio, um, you know, has worked hard with trying to get an infrastructure proposal. President Trump has left that off the table. You would think with a background as a developer, he would want to deal with our broken infrastructure. We have over 15,000 roads and bridges that have to be rebuilt, repaved, and we're talking about job creation for the next 15 to 20 years. We're talking about $2 right. trillion. He doesn't want to deal with that. He's, he's distracted, Wolf. The special counsel also today spoke about the importance of what he called preserving evidence, uh, even if the president is immune from prosecution while he's in office. Do you believe Mueller was suggesting that the president could face charges once he leaves office? It's difficult to say. You know, I'm, I'm listening to legal scholars speak uh, about what he has said, but it's very clear that uh, Director Mueller has really thrown the football, if you will, to Congress. And so I think Congress should take the football, not leave impeachment off the table, but work very deliberately to look at Russia's interference into our electoral process, look at members of the Trump apparatus and what they've done and their being in cahoots, lying to Congress, lying to investigators, lying to the special counsel, working with the Russian government to achieve an end goal that has been disastrous. Congressman Andre Carson, thanks so much for joining us. Always an honor. Thank you.